by the way, welcome back to Think Tank on Learning. So in this video, we're going to look on surfaces, on area of surfaces in space. Okay, so I want to find the area that is inside an ellipse 2x squared plus 2xy plus 5y squared is equals to 4. And what I'm going to use to solve this problem, I'm going to use Jacobians because I think Jacobians will make this question easier. Okay, so if you don't know how to use Jacobians, that is not a problem. Just look on the description. I have a video or a full lecture where I explained how to use Jacobians. So this one is the is the application of Jacobians. You go to that video and are going to see many problems in false Jacobians. Okay, so what I'm going to do solve this question. First of all, I'm going to complete the squares that will help me to choose my Jacobians transformation. Okay, so if I complete the squares, again, write this equation, yes. Okay, so since this is the region, let me just call it R. So I can write R as x plus 2y squared plus x minus y squared. And if I bring this 4, I can just write s minus 4 is equal, is equals to 0. Okay, so if you don't know how to complete the squares, don't worry, I have a video. Just go to my Facebook page on Think Tango Online Learning. I have a video just explained how to complete the squares of problem like this one. Okay, so after completing the squares, I can see now I have x plus 2y squared plus x minus y squared minus 4 is equals to, is equals to 0. Okay, so this kind of looks like equation of a circle, but this equation doesn't have, it's not, doesn't have a, it doesn't have a constant radius, it really radius is firing. So let me just try to sketch what this looks like. I'm not even sure, so I'm just going to sketch it. So maybe it looks something like this. Okay, then from, let me just say from one here, negative one, negative one, positive one here. So this is the range, this is the region that we're talking about. This is R, but I'm not concerned about that one. So what we're going to do, we're going to find a simple transformation. So in other in other question like this one, they'll give a transformation to use, but unfortunately in this one, we're not given the transformation. And in some problems, you may see you'll be told that if you complete the squares, the square. If you complete the square of this function, we're going to get this, but in this video, we're not told, but that is not going to stop us. What we're going to do, just going to work about what we have. So in mathematics, we're going to use what we have to calculate or to find what we don't have, okay? So I think the best plan, I'm going to use what is given. So I have this, this thing squared, this thing squared minus four. So my goal is to obtain a circle. So I'm going to say, let my, let my u be equal to x plus 2y. That means this one will become u squared. And I'm going to let my v be equal to x minus minus y. Okay, so that means this one is going to be v squared. So if I say v squared, u squared plus v squared minus 4 equals to 0, I obtain a good circle. Okay, so now what I'm going to, what, I'm, what am I going to have? So I'm going to have my equation as u squared plus v squared minus 4 is equals to 0. u squared plus v squared is equals to 4. And this one is a good equation of a circle. And if I want to draw it, I know u squared plus v squared is equals to r squared. So that means the radius is true. And if I sketch it, you can see this will become my circle. Okay negative and negative and i'm not going to put x y since i've transformed these coordinates it's now a u v plane right from here we know that the area of this one can find the area by just integrating this region with respect to x and y so i'm going to write the x the y here but for this one you have to change so to transform we have to calculate a jacobian and yes since our our transformer in terms of u, you can see that u is such that the formula and v is with the formula. What we're going to do, we're going to calculate our Jacobian. So let us calculate our Jacobian. So I'm going to say partial uv partial xy. Okay, so that is going to be equal to partial u partial x partial u partial y 
partial v, partial x, partial v, partial y, and if we say partial u, partial x, instead of partial x, partial u, we raise this to the power negative 1. And remember, we just need the magnitude, okay? So now, let us do that. Let's differentiate this respect to x. So if you differentiate this respect to x, we're going to get 1. With respect to y, we're going to get 2. Remember, it's partial differentiation. If you're not familiar with partial differentiation, on the description, you can see a playlist named partial differentiation or partial derivatives. And you can learn how to define this respect to x and respect to y. And if you define this one, the respect to x, we're going to get 1. With respect to y, we're going to get negative 1, like this one. And remember, it's raised to power negative 1. Now, for the determinant, this one's going to be minus 1, minus 2. And it's going to be minus 1, minus 2, to the power negative 1. And let me just put the magnitude there. The modular says show that you just concerned with the magnitude. And we're going to have 1 third. Now that we have our Jacobian, that means the area is going to be easy to calculate. So now area, let's just call this region D. You can just call it R since we've transformed it. So I'm going to say that the area is going to be the integral of D. And in this case, for dy dx, we're going to change it by one third dv du. But uh, I know this is the equation of a circle and the circle is a radius of two. So I think to calculate the area of a circle, I don't have to stress myself. The area is equal to pi radius squared. And we know what is the radius? The radius is two. So the area is equal to four pi. But you have to be careful. Some lecturers may not give you full marks because see, since we're in mod variable calculus, they want you to calculate the area using using double integrals, using cylindrical coordinates. So I'm going to first calculate the area using the short method. And I'm going to show you how to obtain 4 by using cylindrical coordinates right here. But if you leave that lecture, doesn't want you to use double integrals. You can just see, right, this one. Okay, so here what we're going to do, that means our area, we have the integral of D. The integral of D, I think we have it. And so what we're going to do, just going to have one third. So we're going to have 4 pi times the Jacobian and the Jacobian is equal to one third so that means the area is going to be four pi upon three okay and for some lecturers who may not want you to use area goes per radius squared they may want you to use cylindrical coordinates spherical coordinates and what what okay so if you're not familiar with spherical coordinates or cylindrical coordinates check on the description below and are going to see a playlist named introduction to cylindrical coordinates and spherical problems i solved a lot of questions like this one and again, just click on that playlist. And if you go to the screen, you're going to see a link, Google Drive link. And I'm going to see some of the multi variable calculus questions which I have solved. And there's a password, and the password is on the description. Just click there. Okay. So for the area here, what we're going to do, we know that radius is equal to 2. So that means we're going to, we're going to use space, cylindrical coordinates, by the way. And for the angle theta, so theta, since this is a full circle, theta varies from 0 to 2 pi, since it's a full circle, from 0 to 360 degrees, but we're using radians. Okay, then radius, which is r, r varies from 0 to 2. Okay, so that is r. So the area is going to be, a is going to be from 0 to 2 pi for the angle, 0 to 2 for the radius and we're going to have r dr d theta so that is the jacobian that we use when we're using central coordinates okay so from 0 to 2 pi and now let's define this with respect to r which is going to add the power and divide by the new power so we're going to have r squared over 2 from 0 to 2 and we have d theta we have an integrate this respect to theta and going to obtain 0 to 2 pi and right here I'm just going to put 2 squared that is going to give us 4 divided by 2 that's going to give us 2 for 0 and that is not going to change anything so we're going to have 2 d theta and 
if we integrate this respect to theta it's just in constant so i'm going to have two theta from zero to two pi and if it's upper bound minus lower bound we're going to get four pi right okay so this is the four pi so if you don't want to use the short method you can just use this long method but i recommend you to use this one since we're in multi variable calculus okay rather than this one just choose what you want so thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe